All right, guys, let's talk about the brand new Android 14 QPR1 beta. Of course, I've already posted a couple of videos talking about this beta, even singing the praises of some of the brand new features that this beta has brought. But today in this morning's video, I need to kind of bring you the negative side, the other side of this coin. This is a beta. And after a day or so of using this, I have experienced my fair share, maybe more than my fair share of bugs. So in this video, I'm going to very quickly go over the bugs that I have seen or the bugs I have at least heard about and describe these to you so that you can make an informed decision. Is it worth upgrading to this beta? Because like I've said on several videos, people keep asking about this. There's some still some confusion about how this works. Once you are on this beta, the only way to leave it is to wipe your device. You have to opt out. It will then send you Android 13, the public release of Android 13. And when you install that, it's going to wipe your device. The best way to think about this is when it comes to these sorts of betas, you can always upgrade without wiping. You can't downgrade without wiping. So once you're on this, there's nowhere forward to go. The only way to go is backwards, which requires a wipe. Typically what happens is you will reach a point where the beta is coming to an end. So maybe it's QPR three. And what you can do is opt out. And then within maybe a month or so, that stable version of the quarterly platform release QPR will be released. And you can then download that and then carry on and you're no longer on the beta. So once you install this QPR one, you are stuck here for the foreseeable future. So again, People need to be educated on exactly what they're getting into. So let's take a look at those bugs now. All right, so let's go through these bugs and issues as quickly as I can. So overnight, I had this thing at about 99%. I think it had just dropped below 100%. I left it on my bedside table off the charger because I felt like my battery was draining a bit faster than normal. So I wanted to let it sit there after being fully charged all night and see what had happened. Overnight, I went from 99% all the way down to like 80% overnight, just sitting there. So like 20% of my battery drained overnight. That is excessive and it is higher than it normally is. So watch out for excessive battery drain. There is also just a general sort of like increase in like the jankiness, just certain animations moving between apps, doing certain things, just has more stutters to it than it ever did before. This device is typically like unbelievably crisp and smooth. It does not feel like that for me right now. And it's kind of like making me cringe a little bit, but here we are. One of the bigger bugs is something that fellow tech creator Ike from Ike's Tech Talk, I'll drop a link to his channel down below. He actually reached out and asked me about this and I hadn't noticed it, but it's definitely, definitely a thing. What happens is if you open up YouTube on your cover display, and then you open up your device. So you're maybe you're watching a video and you want to transition to the interior screen. What's going to happen is it force closes. You then have to reopen YouTube and you will have lost your location. Whatever video you were in, it's gone. You're basically starting over. That is very, very annoying. In particular, if, you know, and this happens a lot, you're watching a video, you think, I like this video. I want to watch it on a bigger screen. So you open it up and the app force closes. I've not seen this on any other applications. Everything else seems to make that transition just fine. Like let's open up, we'll just do Twitter. And you can see here when I open up Twitter, it does exactly what it should do. But for some reason, something a little bit off with YouTube and that is uh, pretty darn annoying. Another one is with Google Wallet. I'm not gonna open up Google Wallet because it might have some personal information in there. But for some people, Google Wallet is giving an error telling you that it's not compatible or something's wrong. Wallet is still working for me, but it may not work for you. And if you used to have to pay a lot, that might be a deal breaker. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. I also had an issue last night where I was in a group message with my wife and my mom. We were talking about some plans for this next weekend. And because it's a group message, it is being sent over MMS. She, my, my mom has an iPhone, so it's sending everything over MMS. And what happened was my wife comes into the room and says, did you see those messages? And I'm like, no. I pull up my text messaging app, and what I see is that all of those MMS messages from my mom and from my wife, again, this was a mixed messaging group. That was This was Android and iOS. It was all MMS. None of them had automatically downloaded and they were refusing to download. I had to reboot the device and then go through and click each one and then they all downloaded just fine. So potential issues downloading MMS. I've never seen that before on this device. I'm going to attribute that 
to this beta as well. And one more that I actually forgot to talk about while I was in my overhead camera review, so I'll just say it here before I outro the video, I was going for a walk around the neighborhood after installing the beta yesterday, as I am wont to do occasionally, and I popped in my earbuds and began listening to some music, and the audio quality was like abysmally, abysmally bad. So I'm sitting there playing with some settings, trying to figure out what is going on, and eventually I just was like, okay, something's wrong here. So I got back to the house, I swapped earbuds out, I put in my Pixel Buds and they also sounded terrible. So I rebooted the device. When it came back, everything was fixed. Everything sounded absolutely perfectly fine again. And again, I've never seen this happen before on my Pixel Fold. So I'm going to also attribute this to the beta in some way. So there's a chance you'll connect to Bluetooth. Maybe it's your earbuds, headphones, maybe it's your car. Audio might sound terrible reboot and you should be okay after that but there's another one so as you can see it is definitely a little bit on the buggy side there are some problems and i must admit to you that if i were simply a regular person with no youtube channel no audience to speak to i would probably be wiping my device and rolling back to the stable release because the stretching of apps wasn't something I was like really begging for. I will enjoy it on particular apps, but it's not something that I was like, man, I hope, I hope, I hope. And that's really like the primary feature of this beta as I've talked about in my features video for this beta. But I do believe that the thing I can do that will provide the best value to the community is to stay on this beta and report anything else I notice, report any changes that I see. And then when QPR2 arrives, hopefully, three to four weeks, something like that. I can then update to that and tell you if things have settled down. So I'm gonna be trying to stay on this beta until it is through so I can continue bringing information to you guys. So if you wanna see more of that, subscribe before you go. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy. Everybody.